it seemed providentially timely that as we welcome these into the life of our fellowship through confirmation, that we would have such a strong epistle about being strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. It's a tension. And the tension is really actually laid out within the scripture itself. There is, in essence, on the one hand, the great power of God and what he has given us, what he has poured into us, not only in terms of who he is, but what has been imparted to us, literally his very nature. As Paul says in Romans, the very same spirit which raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. That's so big, I could actually just go sit down. And we could take a few minutes just to think about that in terms of what it is that as believers, God has, in fact, implanted within us. The second, in essence, point is, who am I in the midst of all of that? We are like a puff of wind, the psalmist just said. And certainly, it compared to the great strength, and if I can say it this way, the solidity of God in the midst of our own frailty. That also is a point to be acknowledged and recognized. But then there's a third point, and it's the third point that is Paul's emphasis in the Ephesian lesson. And that is not just that God is great and wonderful and strong, and that we, by comparison, are weak, but also, and that he has put something in us which is stronger than anything that we could ever create for ourselves, his own nature, but the call to appropriate it. He says, finally, as if to say in conclusion, which is really the meaning of the Greek at that point, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And the way he lays out how to do that is in the analogies of the Roman armor. Recognizing the fact that we are, in fact, in a spiritual battle, and that at times it will become so fierce that all we can do is literally take our place, stand and be still, because all of the weapons that are given to us are, in fact, defensive, with the exception of the sword of the Spirit. That's the only offensive weapon we've got. So the emphasis, you see, is to stand strong in what it is that has been imparted to you in the midst of such times of genuine difficulty. The assumption is that will hit us every now and then and that that's a part of what life is like. It is, and this is its own sermon, so I won't say much about this. It, it, it is, in fact, a trick of the evil one to merely presume that the battles that we fight are merely issues of sinful conflict between mere mortals. The scripture never makes that assumption. But that rather we are doing our part as witnesses for Christ, and in so doing, there will in fact be opposition. And sometimes the very nature of that opposition is demonic. It is not just merely the byproduct of human sin, but that sin is fueled and inspired by spiritual forces of wickedness. Principalities, power, spiritual wickedness, and high places. <laughs> this isn't just sort of one sort of one low-level demonic foot soldier. But it is in fact laid out as in fact a very well orchestrated strategy to do its best to oppose the work of the spreading of the gospel. And that should be said in terms of the work of the spreading of the gospel. Because if I'm cranky and having a bad day, that could be for all sort of, sorts of reasons. In other words, it's not an excuse for my inability to get along with people. Or people's inability to get along with me. But rather it has to do with a very strategic attack of the forces of the evil one as the people of God step out to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, the assault has everything to do with the desire to impart and release the message and to live that out in a way that in fact points people to Christ. 
It's not just an excuse because life feels against me from time to time. All of us have that happen to us too. We live in a broken and fallen world. But this is not that. And so Paul is very clear about that. So his answer is, therefore, to be strong in the Lord. And he has already laid out in Ephesians what, that, what we've got, as it were. He talks about us being seated with Christ in heavenly places, chosen from before the foundation of the world. More often than not, one of the byproducts of conflict is I forget my identity. My own sins feel stronger than normal. The circumstances feel almost inhumane, because they are. But often my reaction to that is not just to cry out for help, but to forget what it is that has already been given. And the point of this passage is to in fact take up that which you have already received. And the call is, in fact, a call to prayer. Pray at all times and, and in the Spirit. I, I want to read you a brief passage from a classic on this passage by a, a woman named Gurnall, and it's called The Christian in Complete Armor. It, it, it's a Puritan classic from centuries ago. And, and while I occasionally take issue with some of the analysis, I have to admit, I'm not Puritan. In this area, there's a tremendous amount of accuracy. Let me read this. The challenge exceeds the bravery of the best unless they have help from a source greater than themselves. Secular reason sees a Christian on his knees and laughs at the feeble posture of God's child as his enemies descend upon him. Only divine insight can perceive what a mighty work is actually taking place in prayer. Because it is prayer that leads straight to the very throne of God itself. To be strengthened is to know that not only has Christ equipped me for battle, but this very battle is a divine appointment from God. See, not just a mistake of circumstances. You should find great strength and encouragement in the knowledge that your commission is divine. God himself underwrites you in battle and has appointed his own son as the captain of your salvation. He will lead you onto the field with courage and bring you off with honor. He lived and died for you. He will live and die with you. His mercy and tenderness to his soldiers is unmatched. Historians tell us that the emperor Trajan tore his clothes, his own clothes, to bind up his soldiers' wounds. But Christ pours out his very blood is a balm to heal the wounds of the saints. His flesh was torn to bind us up. That's what we've received, you see. And it is that kind of divine commission that gives us the courage not only to act, but to see with divine discernment what's really happening. I can shy away from the called to spiritual warfare, in part because I'm afraid of what might happen to me. But if I understand, which is just ignorance, it only makes it worse, in fact. But if I can step in asking God to help me see things as they are, and out of that understand what I've been gifted with by his own very nature, and that I can pray into this in a way that will in fact change the circumstances, that's a very different posture indeed. That's the call. And it is out of those prayers that even in the face of opposition, I can act with kindness, not see my human enemies as my real enemies, that I can, in essence, turn the other cheek and not return evil for evil, which are, in fact, the offensive weapons that God has given us in such acts of kindness. But I must pray and make the time to pray that I might again imbibe in the great inheritance that I have already received. And out of that, serve faithfully, even in times of deep spiritual conflict, that Jesus might be glorified. Not that I might win, but that Jesus might be glorified. Amen. Amen.